All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from actually a bit of a rainy San Diego for a change. And today I am delighted to be joined by Greg Brooks, who is in Dallas, Texas. How are you doing, Greg? Good, John. How are you doing? Appreciate you having us. Of course, and Greg is a partner in Rocket Station and oversees everything business development and marketing. Uh, he has led teams in many industries, including sponsorship, fundraising, consumer packaged goods, military resale, and hospitality. And he has worked with some of the uh, top Fortune 500 companies as well as started and sold multiple companies on his own. And what we're going to talk today about is restructuring and implementing sales and marketing strategies. So, um, uh, Greg, let's let's just kind of bottom line it. Why why do you think we need to um, restructure uh, sales and marketing um, strategies? Because we let's face it, it's twenty twenty three, and we've solved all those sales and marketing alignment issues years ago, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, and then I think we you know we enter into a COVID world, and then all of a sudden we get technology thrown in our face. We get new ways. We get work from home. We get remote offices, remote team members. So I just think there's a lot that number one that that as uh, Kind of the demands of our consumers change right as people want mm -hmm. more of a personal experience as they want a more now immediate experience um, as well as just like the different tools that are out there whether it's like outsourcing and vas which is kind of what our business does or whether it's the chat gpts and all the new ai that mm -hmm. everyone thinks. there's so much that a sales team can leverage because at the end of the day like we're trying to create great experiences and fit the right product with the right time for our consumers yeah, and it's a good point that you raise now with all the AI tools with ChatGTP, all those other things coming up, and there's there's now hundreds and hundreds of AI tools out there um, that there's going to be more noise created than than ever, and not just that is like people are going to not really know who who are they dealing with is just this like bot generated is it AI is it an actual person, so I think there's real opportunities for how you go to market in differentiating differentiating yourself because a lot of this is running counter to how people came out of. Um, the the pandemic, et cetera, looking for more authenticity, more reality, more human connection. And, and guess what we've delivered is we've delivered a bunch of AI instead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll scale you through the robots. That's how we'll do this. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, and, and that's why and the kind of the topic we're going through today, like mm -hmm. we're big and, and kind of how we built our sales team, how we work with you know hundreds of clients to do it for them is we're big on like, come back home, right? Come back and look at your processes, find your market fit, understand the tools your team is using, how those interlace between, you know, creating those experiences of scale that we all need, right? To keep that funnel mm -hmm. full, to keep our salespeople happy, but then also offsetting that with personalization, right? With, with being able to really create a unique experience that differentiates us from, you know, the competitors that each of us have within each of our, our market, our market specialties. Yeah. And I think today, I mean, there is, uh, I, I think that idea of getting back to fundamentals and process, because that is, I think that's one of the things that has gone by the wayside a lot, which is kind of paradoxical in some ways, is that the more we go to digital transformation and digital transformation requires you to have really, really good, well-defined processes that are, that are dynamic. So you keep reviewing them all the time. And yet, in some ways, we've moved away from process because we've tried to replace process with tools. And I think a lot of people, as you said, need to kind of come back to their sales and marketing um, strategy and look at the processes, look at the alignment, look at the strategy. No, for sure. And I think it just makes it very clunky, right? Because mm -hmm. for a lot of people, yes, you're right, right? We try to fix process. Sales, I mean, we're salespeople, but sales for a lot of people when it when it comes to like whether you're selling software or selling, you know, dental tools or whether you're selling services, right? For a lot of people, like salespeople are kind of like this mythical beast, right? Where it's like, mm -hmm. I, I need a smooth talker. I need someone that can, can convince someone that this is what they need. But that's, at least in my experience, like that's not what sales actually is. Like sales for me is very process driven. And mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people just, like I said, whether it's because they were transitioning to work from home, whether they were trying to take advantage of all the venture capital that was in the world and just scaling their teams. And we need salespeople. We need salespeople. A lot of people have gotten away from like a structure that will create a consistent yep. product in their sales team, right? When it comes to developing the software or when it comes to their internal operations, like most companies think process first, but when it comes to sales, a lot of companies think I want a tenured salesperson who can just, you know, talk, talk you know, talk me, talk me into the ground. And that's just not, you know, it's, it's not setting you up for success. It's not creating scalability within your scale sales team. And then, you know, what we typically find and candidly, we went through this ourselves is it creates a lot of like misalignment within sales. Mm -hmm. We don't clearly define 
what you're doing, how you're doing it, where technology fits, what the technology is doing. It just creates a whole messiness across the board where you have fighting salespeople, you have, you know, really lack of, of the results that you want just because you've hired a bunch of salespeople to go sell, but like no one really knows the how, why, and the what of, of, of where they need to be plugged in. Yeah. And it's, no, that's a great point. Uh, and I think we've, we've seen it, uh, you know, m many times in the past, but you're correct is because some people will still give to get that argument of saying, oh, well, you know, sales is more of an art form and you just let them go, let them go and express themselves. And you go, well, I was going, well, you know, the best salespeople I've ever known. Yes, there's certainly, an, uh, they certainly bring their own personality to it. And they, you know, there is a certain art to it. But they are the most process driven and they follow a process every time and they don't deviate outside that process because they know when they deviate, they get into problems start. But they also know when they stick to their process that the right that they'll identify the right deals and they'll develop them in the right way. So it's a real I think that's one of the biggest myths is that salespeople aren't, you know, top salespeople aren't sales or process driven. No, no, for sure. And and that is really the differentiator between hiring top salespeople and just hiring people to do your sales, right? Mm -hmm. and, and sales is kind of, you know, whether you're, you're an account rep, whether you're a business management rep, right? There's always different varying levels where for a lot of people, it's, yeah, get on the, here's a list, get on the phone, go call, go send a bunch of mm -hmm. emails, go. And, and it's so funny time and time again, whether it's our team, whether it's, you know, working with, with many of our clients' teams is like so often you find salespeople regardless of the skill level, they're really good at that 20%, right? They're really good mm -hmm. at the low fruit where whether it was good marketing or whether they just happen to call the person on the right day, like that was a motivated buyer. But for a lot of businesses to really scale and grow and really leverage and get the most out of their sales team, it's what can you do with the 80%, right? What can you do with the person that's not ready now, but it's going to be ready in six months. And really that's where you see you know, sales and organizations with really high quality processes and being a results focused, process focused sales team. Those are the companies that typically far and exceed, you know, the, the, the others, just because that process makes sure there's, you know, there's no lead left for time. There's no opportunity that's missed from your sales professionals. And a lot of that, just by the nature of salespeople with them kind of always being go, go, go and trying to find the next opportunity. If you as a company can create that culture and give that structure, I mean, it makes you even more valuable to that salesperson because you're teaching them and you're earning them the most that they possibly can and getting them the best sales results all by having that process in place that's really going to allow them to be successful. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And and then obviously, uh, as you said, I mean, working closely with the other groups and working closely with marketing and realizing today that those lines are blurred and salespeople have to be micro marketers in many ways and marketing needs to go further into the sales process than perhaps they did. But it all needs to be aligned and there needs to be really good communication between the two. So um, like I said at the outset, it, it is, uh, I was being facetious, but it's ridiculous. It's 2023. We still have sales and marketing alignment issues. There are still people <laughs> making a lot of money off of trying to bring the two together. But I just think they're so intertwined now that it, uh, and then if you, to your point, if it's, if it's process and your process is laid out, it should be easy to see all the different inputs and hands off and handbacks and hand holding. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and even I, I'm the chief growth officer here mm -hmm. at, at Rocket Station and that role is even intentional. So I oversee both our marketing as well as our business yeah. development and sales. And it's it's because of that alignment, right? In, in a world of, you know, SEO and pay-per-click and, you know, Google AdWords and all the different avenues that think that, that, that leads come from and, and the effort that our marketing team has to do and the amount of time that they're putting in and the tools that they're using if they're not having open communication with, you know, you know this with the sales teams, like it's mm -hmm. all not right. And same thing, if the, if the sales team doesn't have alignment with what the marketing team's doing or what the marketing team has as, as your kind of your key buy box or your avatar, it can all be for not there as well. And, and yeah, like I said, I mean, ever since I got out of college, I, I can remember taking courses in my MBA on sales and marketing alignment. And <laughs> it's amazing that this is still a topic, especially with all the tools and technology that's out there. But it's it's definitely a, a changing world. And, and it comes from the consumer, right? The consumer wants a custom tailored experience that gets them what they want and typically gets them it as fast as, as you possibly can. Well, it's like, how do I balance like world-class experience and customization with something that's scalable for our team. So like having that marketing sales connection is just so, so pivotal.
Yeah, exactly. And I think this is where, uh, you know, technology can really come into play uh, with automa- with automation and digital transformation, but particularly b- because of taking away the rote and the ro- routine tasks or the low value things, taking all of those away and automating them. Because at the end of the day, we want our salespeople and our marketing people to be focused on high value activities. So I think that is where the great opportunity is. But some people kind of look at it differently and they sort of think, oh, let's take these tools and kind of that'll do all the really cool stuff up here. And you're going, no, no, let let your people do the really cool stuff because that's what they're good at and take away all the other stuff by automation and digital transformation. Yeah, no matter how many cool you know tools or AI that gets mm-hmm. launched, right? people, human capital is still the most valuable thing any company has. It's the biggest asset any company has. You know, even though maybe HR doesn't manage it that way, um, mm-hmm. yeah. but it's also it's also the hardest thing to to keep motivated and to inspire. And I mean, a great kind of tie into kind of how we structure this, both within our teams as well as our company, mm-hmm. is is the the outsourcing piece, right? So it's like use your technology, have processes, so you can really have that deep dive and understanding as to what are those very repetitive tasks. Whether it's a a smart chat bot on your website, whether it's you know automated forms that trigger different responses or email marketing, like figure out where the tools are and the things that you're doing manually that can just be plugged into software to do. But then I think there's like another layer there as well, where it's like maybe somebody does want to have a conversation, whether it's via chat or via the phone or via email, but like maybe that conversation still isn't necessary for your top salesperson to have. So that's where like with using kind of the second tier, there's the technology, but then there's the outsourcing option as well, where you can leverage just, you know, really talented salespeople in other countries that cost less, right? On a, on a, on a comparative basis but can still create that personalization to where you can really create scalability. And like what we like to say, like put your A and B salespeople in A and B sales situations, right? All these right. level positions where maybe you need to warm a lead up some more, or maybe it is a longer nurture, like don't lose track of them. So utilizing your technology and then you say leveraging outsourcing as well can be a huge tool to create that world-class experience while still keeping it very personalized, which I think a lot of customers really demand now. Yeah, and and I I agree with you. I think that's a great point about the the outsourcing because uh, it, because here's the thing is like scaling. I think it's, the days of we've been through again with the VCs and everybody just piling money into companies and then there's hiring, hiring, hiring. Uh, and then something like the pandemic comes, recession comes, and guess what? Then they have to downscale, downscale, downscale. Um, but you can scale very smartly if you use outsource. And as you said, if you really keep your A and B people for doing A and B tasks and then you outsource the rest of it, then you have the ability to scale up and down and to react to market conditions in the way that you wouldn't otherwise. Yeah, it's definitely the uh, the age of efficiency, right? Our friend Zuck, that's the word mm-hmm. that everyone's running with. It's the efficiency, mm-hmm. the efficiency. Um, and and I, I think that's true, right? It all comes back, like we talked about, to that sales process piece and having that in line because whether you're looking to outsource and, and outsourcing might mean you're using a third party company to do LinkedIn prospecting for you for mm-hmm. say, um, or maybe you're email marketing for you, or whether that means you're hiring offshore team members that work you know, integrated into your team like they are local, but you're leveraging those economies of scale, it all comes down to that process, right? If you're, if you're lo- looking to hire someone in your local market and just saying, hey, here's our product, figure out, go sell, yep the odds of them being successful is, is, is very slim, right? That's why there's such churn in the sales world. Mm -hmm. Well, now if you talk about using an outsourcing partner or hiring somebody offshore to now do something and it's, Hey, here's our product, go figure it out. Well, what do you think your results are going to be? Right? So it's, it's all about the time. It's about the process to be able to leverage the tool, whether it's technology, whether it's people, whatever the case may be coming kind of full circle and having that plan and being able to clearly outline outcomes and training and product knowledge that's what allows you to run that very efficient but very scalable team where like i said you're not having to you know get a get a cash infusion and hire 10,000 people and then 18 months later lay 5,000 off right it allows you to be stable to be scalable to be profitable which i think is a huge focus for a lot of people but you still have the control and you know that the work is being done in a way that does your product justice yeah, no, no, I and I agree, and that's why I think I think rethinking uh, your whole s- organizational structure and how you operate is critically important. And like we said, I mean that has to that has to go down to process level and and figuring out how. So if you're going to run with I- I some full time employees, maybe some part time, maybe some remote, maybe some outsourcing, maybe some con, all of those. 
it's a great model if you have the process in place to support it. So it all, it all, as you said, it all comes back to that fundamental piece of having the process so you can slot people in and it makes sense what they're doing. Because otherwise, I always think there's always the danger nowadays because there's all these tools, opportunities, outsourced that you end up with. And this is aging me, but once upon a time, people used to build big hi-fi systems and stereos like and they buy a component from this company a component from them, and they'd have wires everywhere and shoot speakers and and when it worked it was fantastic the sound was great but when it didn't work the guy had a nightmare trying to figure out which component wasn't working and it looked hideous and i think sometimes that's what people have been doing is they've just been kind of putting all these pieces together and they've got this whole messy smorgasbord of stuff and it's hard to number one there's no process and then it's hard to find which pieces are working and which aren't yeah, I've, I'm sure you've seen the commercials and don't steal this idea from me. I'll split it with you. But <laughs> like personal, you've seen those bots now that they like audit what subscriptions you're paying for, whether it's Netflix yeah, yeah. or Hulu. And they're like, hey, you haven't used this. Why are you paying for it? And it cancels mm-hmm. it. A lot of businesses need something like that because yeah. like you said, whether it's technology, whether it's um, you know third party vendors, whether it's virtual assistants and outsource partners, like so often because companies are not constantly evaluating their processes and how they're doing things and how they're operating. They're just going to a trade show and saying, oh, that makes sense. We have that problem. Boom, here you go. Well, when the VP or the CEO or the president is the one that goes and buys that and then says, hey, team, you figure it out. We're not maximizing it, right? That's yeah. that's really, you know, regardless of kind of the age of your business, right? Whether you're a startup, whether you're starting to kind of hit that infliction point or whether you're running a stable business, having that constant kind of process driven attitude is really what helps you evaluate, helps you be more profitable, but really make sure, you know, you prevent having those cords and wires kind of running this way and that way. It it gives you that ability to, you know, it's never perfect. It's never, Hey, we know hundred percent of everything and what everybody does and what makes them successful, but having 80, 85, 90% of that clearly concisely laid out drastically helps at every kind of stage and season of business when you do need, because if there's one thing we know, whether it's technology, yeah. there's going to be change, right? There's going mm-hmm. to be change. So the companies that are able to navigate that and get through typically are those companies from a sales perspective that are very process driven across their teams. Yeah. And I think the other thing is, I think also some people misconstrue what process is sometimes. I mean, people think it's, oh, it's going to be this really laborious, granular process you know, uh, process uh, activity where we're going to get down. It's going to take for ages and it's, it's going to constrain us and all of that. But the point that you just made a moment ago is... Uh, if you get 80%, 80 to 90% of things like well laid out in a process, you're you're good to go because there's always going to be a 10 or 20% that's, uh, that number one, it's not going to be any value in you processizing. Um, and, uh, you know, when you're good to go, you're good to go. And I think that's the thing is I think people need to change their attitude towards process and not see it as something constraining, but see it as something that's liberating. No, for sure. And especially because, te- I mean, technology is not going away. I mean, a lot sure. of those processes it's just around enabling your team to understand things like your call cadences, like your Mm -hmm. technology, right? It's, it's more of like a training aid to give them that reference material so that they can be better at their job. Right. So that the salesperson that you brought in, because they have a track record of eight, nine figure, you know, producing, you know, income a year where instead of them focusing, well, how the heck do I use my software? How is this CRM? How do I tag this lead? Instead, they can actually be a salesperson because they know they have that reference material to fall back on, right? That that's the biggest thing too. It's giving tools to your team in a way that they can maximize their skill set. The reason that you brought them there, that you hired them, that you brought them into the team, rather than having to worry about, well, how do we do this? What is the, you know, what, we we work a lot in the real estate industry, so right. w- when it comes to like outbound communication, there, prospecting investors, prospecting potential deals, you know, there's a lot of calling. So we do like mm-hmm. to do templated scripting. And for a lot of investors, you know, I, I don't know if it's the latest gurus or the latest coaches out there. They're like, no, 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 you can't script because someone will sound like a robot on the, t- on, the, on the phone. And it's like, yes, well, when you just give someone a script and don't give them the process or the training around what you do and how you do it, they're going to sound like a robot because they have no contextual knowledge, right? So being able to go off script, if they don't have a good baseline, a good example, they're never going to be able to build the confidence to become a great cold caller you know, yep. for a real estate investor. So it's just about having, you know, I almost see it as like process hacking, right? It's like, how can we streamline and empower our team to really know what we're doing, know what we want them to do and give them just enough tools to where there's a consistent outcome, but they still have the flexibility to morph it and be the person that they are, that, that you hired them to be. 
Yeah, you know, I, I agree. Uh, I couldn't underline that even uh, underline that a little bit more. Is like give them the tools that they need and the tools that actually help them. Just don't give them lots of tools for the sake of it. And as you said, enough of the shiny new toys. Uh, you know, you should be grown out of that by now, but people clearly haven't. Um, listen, Greg, this has been great. All of Greg's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Greg, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company. Yeah, definitely. So, so I'm a chief growth officer at Rocket Station Virtual Staffing. So we're the leading virtual staffing company, specifically in the real estate space. But we do a lot hiring ISAs, you know, outbound sales agents, lead prospectors. So please do. If anyone's interested in learning more, whether it's the hey, how do I build a process driven sales team, or if you've been in the market, you know, for hiring virtual or looking to outsource functions of your business development department. Please, we'd love to have a call with you, discovery.rocketstation.com. Let them know you're, you're, we were on the podcast and that's how you heard about us. We got a little discount for everybody, but would love to kind of continue the conversation for anyone looking to develop processes or, or hire really talented offshore salespeople. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I would encourage everybody, as I said, it's all down here below. Go check it out. Uh, if you haven't considered outsource resources, I would uh, I would uh, highly recommend that you look at it. It's a great it's a great model. And obviously, on the sales process, if you kind of look internally now and you say, "Hmm, I don't we don't really have a properly defined sales process," then again, reach out to Greg and the boys and the boys and girls and that everybody they can help you. All right. Listen, thanks again, Greg. Uh, see you all again soon. And thank you for watching and listening. Yeah.